Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of the Argentinosaurus Stop Motion Project, where during this video we'll be learning some fun facts about these types of dinosaurs, as well as finishing this zombie project off. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well, and thank you for tuning into Moose Motion. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if you're new, and be sure you have your post notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the new content. Anyway, thank you for your support, it's highly appreciated. So during part 3 here, I'll obviously be adding in a lot of the fine details of this sculpture, adding clay, and well, oddly taking it away as needed for, well, special details. Given that this is the Mad Sauropod from Primal, it's probably one of the rare situations where I'm probably taking away just as much clay as I'm adding it to add in details. Given that this character is essentially melting away, it's going to be quite well a process during the animation to make that all work. However, I think it's going to be quite cool in the end seeing it all kind of come together in a 3D platform as opposed to 2D. It'll definitely be interesting, so I'm definitely looking forward to test animations with this character. But as I sculpt away on this dinosaur today, we'll be learning some fun facts along the way. Covering a few things about the Argentinosaurus, you might say, that I didn't have time for in part 2, unfortunately. Where during that video, obviously, we took quite a deep dive into Argentinosaurus itself. This time, well, I don't nearly have as much facts on this dinosaur as I did last time, so we'll probably be covering dinosaurs as a whole, and how they got so large primarily. So without further ado, let's get into some fun facts about the Argentinosaurus and perhaps the heavily nerdy portion of this video. Now to help put this dinosaur into perspective, this thing was taller than a six-story building and longer than three school buses. And ten times as heavy as a elephant. And apparently just one of its legs alone was taller than a three-story building. That's taller than my house, that's just crazy. However, it is also crazy to think about how much food this thing would have had to eat to survive. Approximately 850 kilograms a day, approximately 100,000 calories. The neck had approximately 14 vertebrae, allowing it to reach the top end of trees with ease. Now, obviously, the proportions of this dinosaur are rather large. However, I found one part fairly interesting, or one organ particularly interesting about this dinosaur. The heart of Argentinosaurus was massive, approximately weighing 1,100 pounds. To pump blood through its body, it probably had a four-chamber heart, much like birds and mammals today. This would help maintain its large body size and live a active lifestyle. It's also estimated the hearts would have had to have pumped blood up to 12 meters every 50 to 60 times a minute. Even the footprints left behind of Argentinosaurus were massive, measuring over three feet in diameter. Which is kind of crazy, because that's literally half my height. Now, as a mammal that's approximately 2 meters tall, honestly, it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around these creatures walking around as tall or taller than 5-story buildings. But yet, they existed from the Jurassic to the Cretaceous period when our ancestors were the size of bulls and shrews. Dinosaurs like Supersaurus, Sauroposeidon, and Argentinosaurus were shaking the earth. So you might find yourself asking, why did dinosaurs get so big and why did mammals never even come close to dinosaur size? Well, to our credit, the largest animal ever to exist is the blue whale. It can get up to 30 meters long and weighs up to 145 metric tons, which is two times heavier than the world's largest dinosaur. But to be fair, the biomechanics are a bit different in water. Buoyancy and blubber can do amazing things, allowing sea creatures to achieve sizes that would be impossible on land. When it comes to largest terrestrial animals, mammals were never any competition for the non-avian dinosaurs. Now, there's always been some debate over which the largest dinosaur actually was. But the current record holder for the largest specimen belongs to a sauropod or a titanosaur named Patico Titan. Experts estimate that this Cretaceous herbivore stretched 36.5 meters and weighed 64 metric tons. By contrast, the biggest mammal to walk on land, the hornless rhinoceros known as Paraceratherium, it weighed a mere 15 tons and stood about 5 meters tall at the shoulders. Roaming from Eurasia, Romania to China at the end of the Oligocene Epoch, long after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. 
So how can two subsuccessful animals end up having such different size constraints? Part of it has to do with how they reproduce. Parcerotherium was a placental mammal like us, meaning they gestated their babies inside their bodies. And if this ancient rhino was like anything large we have today, this means this would have taken a very long time. Big mammals like giraffes and elephants usually have one offspring at a time, and gestation can last longer than some other types of animals live. Elephants, for example, carry their babies for more than two years. Now consider the dinosaurs. They didn't really have to carry their babies at all because dinosaurs laid eggs. Even the biggest of the giant dinosaurs hatched from an egg no bigger than a soccer ball. What does this have to do with size? Well, bigger mammal species give birth to bigger young which requires a huge amount of energy and time to gestate. Dinosaurs, on the other hand, totally bypass this problem. Instead of having bigger babies, the largest dinosaurs laid relatively small eggs, producing relatively small hatchlings. Reproducing this way with babies hatching and growing outside of the mother's body removes the size limit that gestation places on mammals. Dinosaurs had another evolutionary advantage. Their skeletons had special features that mammals lack. A sophisticated system of air sacs. These sacs were pockets of soft tissue that were connected to the lungs, think of them as biological balloons. Some of these sacs sat in the body cavities of the bones, usually in the neck, back, and hips. But others ran inside the bones themselves. These air sacs helped shape the dinosaur's skeleton and allowed the bones of the biggest dinosaurs to remain light without sacrificing strength. How do we know extinct dinosaurs had these sacs? Because non-extinct dinosaurs have them too. Birds have similar system of sacs that help draw air into their lungs and keep their skeletons light. And if you compare the respiratory system of birds to the one of giant dinosaurs, you will see the resemblance is pretty striking. Like big sauropods, for example, the vertebrae in the back and the neck have similar pockets and divots as birds of today, where these air sacs would be attached. And when paleontologists scan some fossils of dinosaur bones, they often find hollow spaces inside the bones where these air sacs used to sit. Now keep in mind, bones of spaces created by air sacs are different from hollow bones you see in the legs of birds and other theropod dinosaurs. And not all these extinct dinosaurs had these handy airbags either. Only the type of dinosaur known as the Sloricians had them. In the traditional dinosaur family tree, this group encompasses the theropod two-legged dinosaurs, including birds of today, and the sauropods, the quadrupeds that include the giant titanosaurs. All of the rest of the dinosaurs, like the horned, armored, duck-billed dinosaurs, are known as ornithischians. And they didn't have these features, so they weren't as light on their feet. And of course, we mammals obviously don't have any of these features. We retained a skeletal structure of dense, heavy bones that put a limit on how big we can get before our bones crack under our own weight. But these adaptations are just what allowed these dinosaurs to get so big. They don't tell us why these giants got so massive in the first place. And that's a totally different evolutionary question with lots of possible answers. Maybe living large was a way to stay safe from predators. Maybe their size allowed them to cover more ground and reach higher leafy branches in search of food. Or maybe something paleontologists haven't thought of yet. And then there's another question to consider. Was the ability to grow so large really an advantage? After all, all the sauropods are gone now, and almost all the relatives. After all, of all the entire species of dinosaurs, only the birds, a single group of Cilician theropods, have survived. And they range from sizes to the hummingbird to the ostrich. So today, if it's hard for us to picture a dinosaur as huge as Patago Titan or Argentinosaurus, we can at least understand how animals like this were physically possible. Perhaps we are lucky we haven't reached such giant heights. After all, it would seem, evolutionarily speaking, bigger is not always better. And I personally find it quite fascinating how, well, animals such as this size were ever even physically possible. I personally don't think I'm ever going to be able to get my head around it as, the, well, the Argentinosaurus head comes off here. Now this project is nearly coming to a close, seeing how I'm on the face, it's generally one of the last things I like to sculpt because it usually has a lot of fine details that are generally a lot easier to just not have to work around while you're sculpting the rest of your project. Now one thing I should probably mention, just in case there is some major dinosaur nerds ever watching this content, the nose obviously is quite incorrect that I'm going to be sculpting here, mainly because, well, this is a cartoon character from Primal, so I decided to stay true to the character design there, and not really maintain the scientifically accurate portions that I generally like to stick to. 
now back in the day or like early 2000s uh, 90s I would say it was a common image for Brachiosaurus in particular mainly because of Jurassic Park to have the nostrils placed up on top of that crest however it's apparently been discovered that basically that crest was like the bridge of the nose and their nostrils probably would have extended straight forward to the front of their face so sauropods would have had a very very big nose a lot of the time just figured I would cram in that one last fun fact while also correcting my sculpture here. Well, maybe not so much correcting or more or less justifying. Now, one thing I should admit, this project was definitely a lot more work than I expected it to be, especially the face here. I remember kind of doing this on Sunday, being fairly confident, going, oh, this will be easy, I can usually finish the face fairly quick. However, I underestimated, well, all the rotten details, pun intended. So that's why I'm a little behind schedule as per, well, usual. And as far as my sleep schedule has been concerned, well, breaking it down into three parts hasn't really helped that much either, unfortunately. Mainly because, well, the commentary takes a lot longer on these dinosaurs, and, well, I picked a fairly difficult project this time around. So, be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed the content, that definitely means a lot to me, it you know, helps the channel grow, obviously, too. And if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new dinosaur content that will be coming up. I kind of have some itching for some stop motion animation, because I haven't done one for a little bit. The Jurassic Fart Project was my last one, so that would be a good one for you to check out if you're new here. And, well, the next how-to project will be a Triceratops, so I'm definitely looking forward to making that three-horned lizard. So that should definitely be a lot of fun. So be sure to comment below what you think of the project and well, subscribe if you're new. Now, as I finish up the last remaining details on the face here for our, well, poor infected sauropod in this case, because well, the plague of madness is definitely taken over him more than some people are probably comfortable with. So yeah, he, he's not exactly the prettiest dinosaur in my collection to say the least, but I think he's personally pretty cool. And, well, maybe I'll make some more zombie dinosaurs in the future, because this project actually did do fairly well overall, and, well, we'll see how the animation processing go. At any rate, I'm going to leave you guys now to the beauty shots. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you at the end. Hey, you made it this far in the video, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the content, comment below what you think, share with your friends, and perhaps consider subscribing if you're new. Anyway, that's enough from me, till next time, take it easy.